everybody, it is Julie and I am here with my September wrap up. It is going up late because I had pre-filmed a couple other videos and honestly I wasn't sure I was going to do this video. The reason I didn't think I was going to do this video is that my September wrap up is my October TBR for the most part. So as you guys know my channel is super new. It has only been around for about three weeks and when I started it it was mid-September and I immediately put up a TBR for October and then was super scared that I was going to fail at my very first TBR and I started reading them all immediately and I ran through them all. So now I'm going to be giving you my wrap up in September of pretty much my October, T October TBR and then in my October wrap up I'll let you know what I finished of my initial October TBR as well as what I added in because I am going to be participating in the Spookathon read along if you have not seen that video already because I'm not sure what order that's going up in when it's live I'll link it in the description box down below. Let me jump into what I read. <laughs> for September because it's so many and I have like a little notebook here that I got in an owl crate and this has like little areas for notes and star readings. I read nine books in September and somehow I was worried I wasn't going to be able to read the like six I put on my October TBR. It was not a problem. So let me start off with the first book that I finished in September and that was Maggie Steve Otter's The Raven King. I finished this the dead last day of September. I think, if not close to. I read it in like a day, day and a half, the very last day of September. If you have not already seen it, I will link my review of the entire series up here. I think I gave this four out of five stars. It was okay. It was good. It was one of my favorite of the series. I definitely had issues with the way that things end it. I don't know if most people did. I say most people did because I feel like they should, but who knows? I've heard a ton of people say that they love it regardless of the issues and the flaws that I had with it. Anyway, this was the first book that I finished. And then I went straight into Eleanor and Park, which I also have a review for. I will link that up here. This I listened to on audiobook and it was my first experience with audiobooks, which I enjoyed, but I did have some issues with it on a whole as an audiobook and as a book. I think I gave this a three or a 3.5. It was okay. It was my first Rainbow Rowell book. It wasn't my favorite, but I'm going to give her a shot and continue to read some more and see what I think about it them in general. But yeah, that was my second September book. Then this is where I get into my October TBR that I got really nervous about. And on September 12th, I started Find You in the Dark because I was like, I'll give myself a head start on October, see what I can knock out. Well, in that time, I knocked out two, four, six books. Seven books. I read another ebook. Seriously, that's what I was worried about. But Find You in the Dark is a YA, although it deals with some serious heavy topics. This is a YA contemporary romance, although romance is stretching it. I have heard a ton of people who said that they loved this book. And while it did deal with mental health issues, which I loved, and a very tumultuous first love relationship, it definitely was more new adult than young adult in my opinion. The age of the characters was young adult but there was sex in this, there was graphic um, self-harm in this book and all in all I'm glad those issues are being addressed in books. I think they're important to read about. The ending just made me want to rage and burn the book. But other than that I actually really did enjoy it. I'm glad that I read it. It needed to be talked about. I'm glad that mental health is being talked about in books for this age group and I gave this a three and a half stars. I had issues with how quickly the super super good girl turned bad and I had issues with her motivations for it. So that was one of the stars that I took off. I also had serious issues with the ending and I took off another like half a star for that. Then I read, which I do not have because I'm pretty sure I read it on a digital version, which I could probably pull up on my Nook. 
but I'm not gonna do it. I'll just insert a picture. I read A Kiss of Shadows and that was by Laurel K. Hamilton. She wrote the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series. This is a new series. It's the first book of a new series, although it's not actually new. I think there's like a ton of books out already on it. And that is a fae based book. Again, with a female protagonist that uses sex as a part of her magical powers. And while I find that very empowering and I'm glad that there is no slut shaming for her female characters, it can be over the top. This is definitely, definitely adult. It is definitely graphic in terms of um, sex, so it's definitely veers off of the genres of all the rest of these books. But for a fun, kind of sultry, dirty, smutty read, I actually really enjoy them. It's my guilty pleasure, and I did buy the second book of that series already. I gave that a three and a half stars as well. So sorry if things changed. My camera decided to shit out on me. Can I say shit out? I can. It's my channel. I can say shit out. Then I read Sweet Evil by Wendy Higgins. I gave this four stars and I read this in a day. This was a YA paranormal romance about a half demon half angel girl and a demon boy and I really enjoyed this for the premise. This is the children of the sins or the children of the demon dukes and they're on earth kind of doing the work for their parents and they need to bring humans to sin so they're trying to draw you into sin and Anna is a little late to the party she was unaware of her father and her mother's origins and she's very very naive to it all and trying to make her way and battle both sides of her that are kind of both calling to her. So when her good and her bad sides go to war and she's stuck in this kind of seedy underbelly, she needs to still make sure she can stay alive. That's becoming increasingly more difficult. And then after this, I believe, is Sweet Reckoning and Sweet Peril. I don't know which order, but I have already purchased them and I plan on reading them because, again, it was just a really fun, simple, quick read that I found the premise of and the character builder building in enjoyable. Then I went from that to The Girl on the Train and this is by Paula Hawkins. So as everybody knows at this point this is not a new book. It is being made into a movie, has been made into a movie, is currently out in theaters and so everybody knows the premise. It's about a woman who rides a train and kind of spies on a couple to the point where she feels like she's involved in the couple's romance and lives and when she sees something that's unsettling she decides to go to the police and let them know and try to plant herself inside the investigation so that she can get insider knowledge because she feels like she's owed it. She, you know, she cares about these people and she deserves to know how everything went down. There are a few narrators in this book. All of them are very unreliable. They're either semi-sociopathic or they're alcoholic. You're never really sure what kind of information you're getting and whether or not you should trust it. And I understand that makes for an interesting reading experience. I personally just don't enjoy it. However, having all flawed, almost unlikable narrators was kind of different. It wasn't horrible. I gave this four stars. Was Born Sinner by S.L. Jennings and I think I gave this, what did I give this? I don't know. I gotta look it up y'all. I'm not from the south. I don't know why I said y'all. I really don't. Born Sinner, I gave a three stars, three and a half stars. I don't want to give away too much but there are fallen angels on earth whose mission it is to stop terrorism and violence from spreading. But one of their missions kind of turns a little south. They're not sure if they want to eradicate this one particular threat. In fact, they may want to protect this particular threat. They run into Eden. Eden is a conundrum. How to not spoil this? In the first couple of pages, you learn that Eden has abilities. She's able to think things at people and make them do it. So she could whisper it to somebody for them to fall down and they fall down. Well, that's a pretty dangerous ability. So obviously these people that are hell-bent on eradicating danger in the world are gonna be targeting her. Things go a little upside down, a little topsy-turvy. There is some steamy romance in this. This this is definitely a new adult. There was definitely a cliffhanger at the end of this. There's definitely some seriously graphic, graphic scenes in this. So do not pick this up unless you're over 18 unless that's your jam and you're okay with that. But there's some pretty graphic stuff in this. I love the soft feel cover of this. Like seriously love it. I would get this from the library and not actually buy the rest of the series if I didn't just want like a whole collection of soft cover books. Why doesn't everybody make soft cover books? They're delicious. Like literally 
not literally, don't say that, Julie, but they're just so much fun to read. And it makes a kind of steamy, naughty book even more sensuous when like the actual physical feel of the book is pleasurable. I enjoy it, guys. And then I read Six of Crows, also on my TBR for October, guys. This book is, first of all, gorgeous. Can you say like stunning? This book is stunning. I can't get over how pretty it is. I just want to look at it all the time. I gave this a five out of five stars. It was not even a question. If you watch my mid-year freak out, you know that I talked about Lee Bardugo. I talked about Inej. I talked about Kaz. I, the characters in this are gorgeous. The world is gorgeous. In fact, I went out and immediately bought the Grisha trilogy, which you will have seen if you saw my, what, what did I title it? I think it was like my birthday month slash end of September book haul. I'll link that up here. I'll also link my mid-year freak out up here where I talk about this a little bit more. This was by far my favorite book of the year so far and it's just gorgeous. I love Lee's style of writing. I love her character building. I love how you get to know in-depth backgrounds of all the characters without information dumps. Like you don't feel overwhelmed with background, but the background is there and it's so rich. I would honestly do a whole book chat on this if I didn't think that there was already so many flooding booktube because this book is over a year old and Crooked Kingdom is now out, which I have. It's on my bed and I'm about halfway through it and I am so excited to finish that and then I will do a book chat on that and give you more in-depth reviews of that book. This is only a duology so I'm really kind of nervous to finish this book and be done with these characters. Although I still have a trilogy of the world left, I don't want to leave Kaz and the Crows. I really don't. And last but not least, in September, I read, again, another soft touch book, you guys. This is Kendare Blake's. This is Three Dark Crowns. And I thought that this would make a great addition to my October TBR. And then I read it in September. I'm going to do a full review on this. I have not done it yet, but I will link that in the description box below once it is live. I gave it a solid four stars. It was slow to build. It was a first book this is going to be a series. So it was foundational. There was a lot of background, a lot of information to take in on the world, which I understand, but sometimes that can be really hard to get through. However, I did find myself really, really enjoying this. This is the story about triplets on Fenbairn, and the story goes that every so often triplets are born. The three girls are all given powers. There is an elemental who controls the elements, a naturalist who can commune with animals and help things grow, and a poisoner who is completely immune to poisons. They have to be raised to be queen until the age of 16 where they are put up against their sisters and need to kill off their sisters in order to win and win the crown. And there is an inherent issue in that Mirabella, the elemental, is the only one with any foreseeable powers. Arsinoe, the naturalist, and Catherine the poisoner seem to have no powers or very, very weak powers, which is an issue because Mirabella is incredibly strong and they're pretty certain they're gonna die. So they have to come up with alternative plans to try to win the throne and not be killed once the battle begins. And there are some romances, but what I really loved about this book as a prequel to my full review is that there are some very, very strong friendships in this book. And the female friendships in this book being a focal point is a defining characteristic of this book and one of the things that made me really love it. So I did really enjoy this book. I'm excited for the rest of them. I will give a full review and link that down below when it is up. That was my September wrap up. I read nine books, which was pretty good for me given the fact that I started this channel in mid-September. So I don't think I need to worry anymore about my TBRs. I don't think I need to worry about my goals. I'm really sorry that I started all of these early because this was the majority of my October TBR. Save the Enemy and the Dead by Charlie Higson. And I did start that. I did start the Enemy in October. So you should still see those in my October wrap up. Thank you for being understanding for my very first TBR and my very first wrap up and the confusion 
that ensued. But this has been my September wrap-up, which was mostly my October TBR. I hope you enjoyed watching and getting a synopsis and my thoughts on all the books that I read this month. I really look forward to catching up with you at the end of October and continuing this reading binge. I'm loving it. And I will see you guys in a video very soon. In the meantime, be sure to click the thumbs up and subscribe button. Both of them help me a lot as a new channel. And don't be ashamed. Share. Tell people about me. I look forward to talking to you guys in the comments below. See you in my next video.